today we are checking out a couple of articles about meat and came across one from momsacrossamerica.com. GMO impossible burger tests 11 times higher for glyphosate weed killer residue than beyond meat burger. So just a heads up, I've been seeing quite a few different things on this in the last, you know, probably three months since Burger King came out with their impossible burger and all these different things. Um, just a heads up, you know, I'm going to read the article so you're aware of it. It says a Monsanto trial jury awarded the plaintiffs over $2 billion for the connection between the glyphosate based herbicide Roundup and their cancer. Today, moms across America announces that the Impossible Burger tested positive for glyphosate. The levels of glyphosate detected in the Impossible Burger by Health Research Institute laboratories were 11 times higher than the Beyond Meat Burger. The total result glyphosate in its breakdown, AMPA, was 11.3 ppb. Moms across America also tested the Beyond Meat Burger and the results were 1 ppb. So that's, that's a pretty substantial difference. We are shocked to find that the Impossible Burger can have up to 11 times higher levels of glyphosate residues than the Beyond Meat Burger, according to these samples tested. The new product is being marketed as a solution for healthy eating, when in fact 11 ppb of glyphosate herbicide consumption can be highly dangerous. Only 0.1 ppb of glyphosate has ever been shown to alter the gene function of over 4,000 genes in the livers, kidneys, and cause severe organ damage in rats. I am gravely concerned that consumers are being misled to believe the Impossible Burger is healthy, stated Zen Honeycutt, Executive Director of Moms Across America. I understand exactly what she means. I also would like to, I'm wondering how much soy is actually in the Impossible Burger myself. So the Impossible Burger is a new genetically modified plant-based product that was prominently featured at the Natural Products Expo West. Burger King, White Castle, Hard Rock Cafe, Red Robin, Cheesecake Factory, and hundreds of other restaurants now carry the product where it does not have to be labeled or described as GM on the menu. The Impossible Burger is made up of made of GMO soy, which is exactly what I just said, which has been shown to cause organ damage in animal studies and has also shown to be significantly different different from the non-GMO soy. The GM ingredients of the Impossible Burger, which includes a genetically modified yeast and GM soy. I'm not even going to try to read that word. It's L-E-G-H, hemoglobin proteins 46 of which are undisclosed and untested are even more concerning to many consumers than long-term health effects from glyphosate because of the reported immediate allergic reaction potential which is acknowledged by the manufacturer the part of the genetically modified soy used in the impossible burger has never been before been allowed in the human food supply and has not been properly safety tested so that's definitely something you may want to take a look at. Um, I don't know why they're trying to push this on the people who are used to eating meat, making them believe that it's healthy. But I do have a hunch. So we'll get into that in a second. But I, I basically want to continue reading this because it's very informative. It says, updated. Impossible burger and ingredients. All ingredients in red could be GMO or sprayed with glyphosate. Herbicides as a drying agent, water, soy protein concentrate, coconut oil, sunflower oil, natural flavors, 2% of or less of pro potato protein. And it goes on and on. And we'll, we'll include this on AcadianaHamburger.com so you can take a look at this and as well as the original article. So it says soy, sugar, and cotton are commonly sprayed with glyphosate herbicides as a drying agent before harvesting. The natural product, which could contain more than 80% GMO ingredients, also contains potatoes, which may be genetically modified and could also absorb the chemical through the soil after pre-planting herbicide applications. Glyphosate does not wash, dry, or cook off and was listed on the Prop 65 California EPA list of carcinogens in 2017. So, I guess the question is this. Why are they trying to push it? 
that's the question I have. Um, I recently had a situation where I, I realized that a lot of the things that are not on labels, they're not on labels for a reason. And a lot of these things that they're describing here, clearly soy is, is, is one of the biggest killers in men's testosterone today. Um, and the more that you do ingest soy, it will continue to keep messing with the testosterone level of, of, of a man. So <laughs> with these things being said, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things being sprayed on even things like chicken. So, uh, you know, beef has a certain criterion, I think, that you have to do. If, if it says USDA or bison, or if, if it has a label on it, they can't really mess with it. So it's your cheaper meats that I think that they're trying to mess with for some strange reason. The similar fashion, I think, you can't also put on a label is the chemical reaction that takes place from hot to cold so it, w the question I have is these chemicals that are being sprayed what happens to them when they hit freeze point and melting point because I think that w that's also something that needs to be looked at I don't think I've ever seen a study on it so it's just a question so just be aware of what you're eating and trust me regular real beef is what you should be eating not anything that is not labeled as a beef product. Have a good day.